But Dr. Bruce Lipton uh, did a stem cell experiment in 1967. And what he did was he put a stem cell uh, and he allowed the stem cell to duplicate and then stem cells divide. And these are, uh, this happens, this is in nature. So he took a stem cell and allowed it to just divide, divide, divide until he had tens of thousands of these stem cells. And all of them had the same DNA. So what he did was he separated them into three Petri dishes. And each one of the Petri dishes, he put what he called a culture medium on it, which means that all the stem cells were exactly the same in three different dishes, but what the environment covering the stem cell, which represented uh, in, uh, uh, something that you would, your, your, your cells in your body would, would be covered with blood. And in this case, the environment that he covered it was plasma. Uh, like substance, which means it emulated blood-like uh, condition. So stem cells in blood, basically, it's bathing in your in your body, basically. So he took these three petri dishes, and he put a different culture medium. And he added something different in each one of them, and uh, he expected that they would all produce the same outcome because they were exactly the same DNA. But what he dis what he found was that in one petri dish, bone. Uh, was being produced by the stem cells. It, it actually produced bone. The other one produced muscle. And the third one produced fat. So he started scratching his head saying, hang on a second, it's the same DNA. If there was a genetic uh, fault in the DNA, that genetic fault would have happened no matter what the environment was. So what he discovered from this, this is in 1967, that it is the environment that triggers your genes. Now, he actually had to stop teaching medical school because a prevailing thought during 1967, and you can read all about this in his book, Biology of Belief. He's got a 10-year, a, uh, a, a new edition. It's a 10-year edition that's just come out. He was, uh, you, could, you can look him up, uh, uh, Bruce Lipton. Anyways, what he did was he uh, had to quit medical school uh, because the prevailing thought there was that genes actually determine your uh, your health and your reality and what he discovered was no it was the environment that actually triggers the genes to produce something and depending on the environment the genes produce something totally different so in one case it produced it, uh, fat cells were, were induced the other one bone and the other one muscle so how do we use this in our everyday life by the way there's a new science called epigenetics and I'm, I'm going to type this in Look it up. This is exactly uh, what. Uh, let me just do this. Yeah, yeah. So this is exactly what new science is revealing now. They're, they're actually coming up with a new category of science called epigenetics, which did not exist in that name in 1967. This is what uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton did, determined, but now it's called epigenetics. Dr. Bruce Lipton found that as when people are in love, the brain is releasing a cocktail of chemicals, including growth hormones. So when people are in love, they have so much health that they glow. So positive emotions creates a healthy, a healthy body. And that's the perception. When we have positive emotions, our body senses that we're perceiving something positive, and the body responds. Because there's chemicals in the blood that are being released when you're having positive thoughts. Now let's look at the other side of the coin. When you see something that scares you, you release stress hormones and inflammatory agents that affect the immune system, which means that when you are scared or stressed out, you have an immune system that's depressed. And so when we, how do we uh, apply this in our everyday life? Is when we are, are upset at somebody, for example. When we're upset at them, we are actually reducing our own immune, immune system uh, functioning. And so, we, as a result, and remember, it's just a perception. We don't have to, we can choose not to be angry at somebody. We can choose to be in balance and, ex, ex, uh, and, 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 and approach the situation from a state of neutrality rather than having that, uh, shooting our immune system down. And that's really the point that I wanted to make in this brief five minute presentation is that you can actually change uh, your perception. So is it possible to consciously shift your emotions? Because when things are happening around you, can you possibly shift your, uh, your perception so that your body does not, uh, is, is, is your immune system is not compromised? And of course the answer is yes, because if the answer was no, we would end this conversation right now. And you would unsubscribe from everything I have to say from here on.
One of the things that I, I've noticed is that whenever I, I hear somebody say that this person did something or this person has been doing something uh, and, it, and it angers that person who's reflecting that to me, I have two choices. I have one choice of saying I can join you in that anger and say, yeah, that I know that person and, it, and that person's capable of doing that. And I get into that angry phase. And often what I follow, nine times out of ten, my experience has been that when I take a neutral stand with this technique and go and talk to them and try and understand them from where they're coming from, it is actually uh, more productive because that person actually feels supported. And if that person is doing something that is inappropriate, that person is more receptive to changing that behavior because you're approaching them in a, in, a, in a sense that you're not attacking them. And that's the whole point. No one wakes up in the morning and says, today I'm going to screw up. Everybody wakes up in the morning and says, today I'm going to shoot the lights out. I am actually going to perform well. So that person that you're approaching that, that has this reputation didn't wake up this morning and say, I'm going to really screw up my reputation. So what you want to do is you want to help them match those desires that they woke up saying, I'm going to shoot the lights out. First question. Michelle, uh, you've asked, do you have the breathing pacer set at the rate it is for a specific reason. Uh, thank you for that question, Michelle. Uh, absolutely correct, yes. That breathing pacer is actually set by the heart math, folks. That is a heart math uh, breathing pacer. If you're familiar with the M-Wave unit, which is a unit that measures your heart rate variability produced by uh, heart math, folks, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing device. You can look it up on, uh, on the heart math uh, website. That breathing pacer is set to five uh, seconds breathing in and five seconds breathing out. And that uh, actually translates uh, to a, a, a rhythm that creates that, um, that coherence in your body. Now, heart math folks have also said that, that is, if, you, if you aim for that, that's wonderful. If you take deeper breaths, that's also good. Uh, but this is the pace that they have done their studies on. So yes, thank you for asking that question. I've never had that question asked before. And if I had, uh, if I find out a little bit more about it, uh, I will certainly uh, keep you guys informed. But uh, that is, uh, I've had a talk with Roland McCready, who's the, who's one of the director of research there when I was there at HeartMap last time, and he talked about uh, the five seconds uh, in and out pacing. Uh, and it's actually, interestingly enough, mathematically, uh, that pace is, uh, translates to 0.1 hertz uh, frequency, which is exactly the frequency a component of your heart rate variability, the beat to beat changes in your heart rate. It is exactly the same frequency as what that beat to beat heart rate frequency has to be in order for you to reach that coherent state. Have a wonderful evening or morning, wherever you may be. Mm -hmm.